This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going all the way to London. Yes, beautiful London, but most of the time we're gonna be in alleys with shady individuals, you know, the ones that wear those hats and have those guns and you just can't really trust because this game is a story-driven cooperative game called London Dread from Gray Fox Games. It's for two to four players. It takes 60 to 90 minutes to play. Let me show you what's played. I'll see you on the other side. In London Dread, you'll be taking a character and you'll be cooperatively going through London trying to get through a specific story in your adventure. The game comes with a storybook, which has four different stories or scenarios that you can choose for the game. You can replay the scenarios. It's not ruined when you play them once. Most of these stories have two chapters and each of those chapters go through two phases. Each player gets a character and it tells them what types of tasks they're good at. Uh, and kind of tells them about their personality because everyone comes with a personality deck as well. The first phase of each chapter is the planning phase. This is a timed 12 minute round where everyone is at the same time planning what they're going to do. Every player gets one of these time boards. You'll start at 6 a.m. and people are deciding where they're going to go at what time to go work together to get tasks done. So for example, if my character, if I wanted him to be in the number one spot in my part of the city, I would say number one and let's say it then I want this player, this character, to go to the third spot in that same spot of the city. And then I want him to go to the east side of the city. And you're going to be working and talking with everyone else trying to decide where to go. Well, how do you know where to go and what to do? There's four sides of the city. We have the west, the north, the east, and the south. And when the timer starts, you will be flipping cards and deciding where to go. Because what you're trying to do is flip over cards. You'll be flipping them over all of the board. You want to get a good balance between having a lot of cards turned over that you think you can get and finish without having too many tripped over that you won't be able to get to. You'll be doing that for the entire 12 minutes, flipping cards, deciding where you're going, and programming all your boards together. Now, once it's time to, to go to the story phase, uh, you'll be going and reenacting re those certain things. So let's say a couple of people on their first move was moving to the fifth spot of West. They would move their characters in this spot and they would try to fix or finish this specific card and this would tell them what they would need to have. Each character automatically has some certain things on there. Everyone has at least one wild and this card tells me that I need to have at least three total of these types of symbols. If I do not do this by the end of the round, I'm going to get three dread, which is sort of the, the bad uh, uh, clock to of the game. If this player went there with them, this player has, uh, you know, one of these symbols plus could be a wild. So between the two of them, the two wilds and this, they could finish this card. Some characters have special abilities with their virtual tokens that you'll start with one and this will give you maybe two more of a certain type that you're going for to try to finish some of these tasks. And if you're not able to finish this task, this card would stay there again and be worth three dread at the end of the round. But if you are able to get it, you would be able to take it and be able to place it face down in the investigation deck. And later on, I'll tell you how you can use these to help you finish tasks. Over the course of the game, you'll be getting different items that will help give you different things that will help you essentially get tasks done. And you'll be, you can either use them for the ability or you can completely deplete them and get rid of them and have a more powerful ability. Now before the story phase actually happened, any of these places that had these plot cards, these placeholders, would actually get a plot for this story. Now the Dread cards are pretty much the same between the first and second, uh, if you're playing the first and second chapters uh, respectively over the different stories, but the plots are what makes each story different, plus the stories have different rules. But here the plot cards are different. This one A has to be done first and it has to be done during the morning of everyone's clock. So if you look at your clock here, this one has to be completed here you, or, or very bad things happen to you in the first thing so you're planning this and you're trying to get these now these work a little bit differently from just matching up the icons you'll still match them up but then this will tell you how many dice you get to roll now we're coming up to a plot each character has their own deck of cards they would shuffle them and flip over one of their character cards which could be something good which is mean giving them some of the symbols that they need or it could be something bad like a their personal trauma they have to roll a trauma die and usually something bad happens they would take any icons and possibly these plus their normal characters plus any items they want to use plus any virtue tokens and they'll get that many dice to be able to roll to try to beat this task 
after each of the players rolled all the dice that are actually at this location, you see how many successes you have, which are this, and then you see if something bad happens, something good or something really good, you can get some items. Now, if you're able to make it towards the end of the game, the antagonist comes out, which usually gives you something special, and then you go through a specific challenge deck for that specific story. A challenge will come out, people will say whether they want to stay or, or, or you know, sit out to the end. And then all those cards that you got in your investigation deck that will help you get kind of built, uh, you know, uh, dealt out to everybody. And people are trying to use their personal characters, items, uh, cards they've gotten to try to beat each of these challenges to try to get through all the challenges. You're going to be gaining certain dice during those challenges because at the end, everyone's going to have to roll one at a time and you have to get a certain amount of successes depending on how far up the dread track you are. If you ever get over 50, the game ends immediately. But if we were here, you'd need seven successes on a final roll off for everybody who's still there and alive, able to try to take it down and always comes out to the last dice roll to end the game. If you succeed, you'd go to the next chapter. Most stories are two chapters. The first story is only one chapter. Now, when you play the game with two or three players, there's many different allies. Here's just a few of them that will get mixed in a certain amount, depending on the amount of players, in with the dread cards. And so when you uncover these and you go get them, you can attach these allies, a certain amount of them to your character, depending on the amount of players. And these guys just give you extra types of things, sort of like, you know, it's basically kind of like another character that will help you out. Well, there is London Dread. Now, I like cooperative games. I like programming games. I like cooperative programming games. Uh, so this one had a lot more of a story-driven element than, than I typically uh, get into. Uh, one way I, I had heard this described is it's sort of like Space Alert meets uh, Eldritch Horror, if you will. Uh, and, and, and after playing this a few times, I think I would agree with that. So. Who would like this game and what did I like about it? Well, first of all, yes, it's very story driven. The artwork in this game is awesome. The components, top notch. Gray Fox always knocks it out of the park. Uh, the story's there. I like how you have different scenarios and they'll probably be able to expand upon this pretty easily. But even with the four stories that are there, it's not as if you can't play the same story again. Sure, maybe you know what's on the back of the plot card, but you read different things on those plot cards depending on what happens. So you can play the same story multiple times and you're not really losing that much. Um, so I like that aspect of it. it has story driven, but it's not like a consumable completely. Uh, I like how they give you an introductory scenario and then they have you go into the ones that have the you know two chapters, which is about twice as long and much harder. Uh, but overall, I like the programming aspect. It's pretty cool. You get that 12 minutes and it's very frenzied. If you don't like those real time games where there's a lot of tenseness, you're probably not going to like this because that is the crux of the game is really you're trying to program everything in 12 minutes. I love that tension. I love it. That was my favorite part of the game was cooperating with people. Where are you going to go? Let's go over here at 6 o'clock. Then we'll go west. Then we'll go here. Then we'll be able to get this. Then we'll go over here. And I like that cooperative nature. I like the tension that that had with it. And then afterwards, you're going out with the story. You're doing the things. And it's just kind of like doing your actions that you had sort of planned in advance to try to see if you can get there. Now, the end game is kind of cool, too, where you get there and you've got those different challenges. you got to say whether you're in or bowing out. You're trying to get all those dice. And then it comes down to the end of the game with that, that crazy dice roll. Can you get it? The game is hard. Um, now, it is a 60 to 90 minute game. And I was fine with the dice rolling because it, it had a sort of a climactic ending. But I could definitely see some people not wanting a 60 to 90 minute game coming down to the end of a dice roll. Now, with that being said, you know that each side of those dice have two sides that are successes. So statistically, every three dice, you know, you'll get one. And if you need to get seven successes, well, you know how many dice statistically you need to get. If you get less than that, well, you've got less than a chance to do it. If you got more, well, the chances are on your, on your side, but you still might lose. If you don't want to, if you don't like to have a game lose like that at the end, then this might not be the one for you. But I think it's the experience of the whole game that, that makes it good. So be wary of that. If you don't like programming, you don't like cooperative, or you don't like you know, possibly losing a game on a die roll, man, yeah. But there's a lot of ways to mitigate that. The whole game, you're mitigating how many dice you get. So I don't think it's that big a deal, but some people, that might rub them the wrong way. Uh, the story elements are cool. The app is cool. Uh, if you get the app, it kind of listen. It has someone read you the story, has some cool sounds going on, especially during the end and the challenge and stuff. I liked it. So, uh, and I like the story. The story different stuff was cool. Uh, the, oh, the negatives, I would say, is uh, it's a little bit of a hard thing to teach for the first time. The concepts, uh, uh, you know, mechanically, it's pretty simple once you know the game. I mean, you're just talk, talk, talking about where you're going. You're matching up symbols. You're trying to get more dice. Uh, it's pretty simple that way. But to, to lay this thing out to a brand new person and try to teach them this, it's a little bit of a bear to teach it. Um, and then uh, because of that real-time aspect. And also, uh, you know, 
it can be a little while to set up because each of the scenarios are different. You gotta find the right chapter cards to go in the right chapters. You gotta find the right plot cards and like challenges. And there is some setup there too, but those are the only negative things. The game's long enough that I think the longer setup is okay because the game is also somewhat lengthy. Uh, so this was something fresh, different, something that I hadn't experienced before. And I like playing games that I feel like I've never played anything like this before. And this was one of those. So by now you should probably tell if it's for you or not. For me, I enjoyed it. Um, it's not my favorite co-op ever, but it's definitely something different. And if you like that story-driven element with some uh, cooperative programming, that's one you're gonna wanna uh, check into, but just be wary of some of the other things I mentioned, and that is London Dread. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.